Welcome back to another badass video from Network Engineer Academy. And yes, this is video number five. So if you haven't watched any of the previous videos, make sure you go back and watch the previous videos because once again, you're not gonna get on exactly what we are doing because I'm doing these videos in order and how to configure and build this network, okay? So, on the previous video, right, what happened? You know, we put these two PCs, right, on VLAN 10. And by the way that I'm walking you through, it makes sense that, yes, you know, they're supposed to communicate with each other, but they're still unable to, even though they are on the same VLAN, okay? And probably some of you right now, like, Jorge, come on, man, let's, let, let's get right into it. You know what's missing. And probably some of you, you went through the process and did the research, and you find out that when you have two switches, right for them to exchange information about VLAN information you need to do exactly trunking okay so between these two switches trunking needs to happen if that's not trunking between those two switches they're not going to be able to transfer VLAN information okay those frames okay so let's do that let's go through the process so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to uh, uh, this switch, and by the way, I'm not gonna talk about too much about trunking, but there's two protocols, okay, two of them. And more likely one of them, it, we're, we're, we no longer use, okay? Well, probably in some companies, but more likely we're not using that right now, okay, anymore. So let's jump in on those, switch, on those two switches and go through that process. Now, let's say, right, that I have no idea where this switch is connected to and the other switch. So that's a, 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 a command that I'm gonna show you and how to find out other only, okay, other only Cisco devices, you know, uh, are connected to this switch, okay? So this is what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do enable so that I can be in privilege mode and I'm gonna do show CDP. And because I don't remember, right? Like you don't have to be a, fuck, a fucking genius. Question mark. Oh, now I remember neighbors. Okay, neighbors, show CDP neighbors. Okay, and CDP stands for Cisco Discovery Protocol. Okay, so I'm gonna click enter and bam, it's telling me right there, hey Jorge, you know, you have another switch, the same model, the 2960, you know, connected to this port. So I'm like, okay, so now I know that this port, that's the one that I need to configure with trunking because that's the one that's gonna connect to the other switch. So I didn't have to go to the other switch and for me to take a look at it like, okay, where, you know, this uh, switch is connected to on the other switch. Now with the CDP um, the protocol, you're able to find that information. So let me go to this port on Gigabit 02. So I'm gonna go to global configuration interface and now this is a gigabit. It's not a fast ethernet, it's a gigabit port. And this is port one, right? Oh, no, that was port two. Right here it's telling me port two. So I'm gonna go on that port, bam. Now I'm inside this port, right? So I'm thinking now, okay, what's that command? Because I don't remember. Well, let me do question mark. Let me see what options do I have, you know? Do I wanna do a, a channel group? No, that's for Ether channel, so I'm not using that right now. Duplex, that's the speed. No, let's uh, keep uh, going. You know, it makes sense to do switch port again. So let's do that, you know, switch port. Question mark, because I don't remember. And I'm doing this because I need to make sure that you get this. Like, you don't have to be a fucking genius to be a badass, high paid network or systems engineer. You just need to know, okay, what am I doing? Let me analyze this. I remember, yes, you know, I'm gonna go through this process and I'm gonna figure that out because I don't have to be a fucking genius. You know, a lot of people think, oh, if you wanna be a badass in the IT field, yes, you have to be like really right, like badass from right here. No, you don't, okay? So, I'm gonna do question mark, bam. So now let's see, let's see which one. Oh, I see something that has to do with trunking. Okay, and let me use mode. Probably this is the one. Okay, so let me use mode. So switch port, mode, question mark, and the only option, right, right here, access, dynamic, and trunk mode. So the only option that makes sense is trunk. So I'm gonna put trunk, question mark. 
Now this is good because once you get this, once you do a question mark and once you get this from a router or from a switch, that basically that device it's telling you there is no other options, you're done. Like that's it, that's, that's no other options. So in this case, that command is switch port mode trunk, okay? Now look what's gonna happen right here. That connection is still in green. So I'm gonna click enter, bam. So now they went down because something is happening, okay? And that's it. So now what I have to do is go to the other side and say, hey, I need you to be a trunk as well. So let's do that. So let me go to this switch really quick because I already walked you through this process. And I'm gonna do enable and I'm gonna do the same show. CDP, uh, neighbors, enter. And yes, I'm connected on the same port on the other switch on Gigabit O2, okay? So now I know, config T, interface Gigabit O2. And now what I'm gonna do is, because now I remember, switch port, mode, trunk, enter, okay? And bam, okay? So let's see now. So I'm gonna log into any of these computers and once again, I'm gonna ping the same PC, the PC6. Before, we couldn't, there was not communication, right? But now, okay, Jorge told me that after moving the ports where the computers are connected to, to the proper VLAN, then because they're in different switch, I have to do some trunk, trunking and I went through the process, so I'm done. So let's see now if it works. So I'm gonna click enter and bam, boom, you are a badass. You know, most people out there right now, they're fucking CCNA certified. And you can ask them about this process, they have no fucking idea, okay? But because they just go through a fucking video, like probably PowerPoint presentation, they don't do anything. You know, they memorize the fucking questions and they don't analyze, they don't do none of this shit. And that's the reason why they have us. <sighs> I'm so passionate about this, but anyways. Um, so yeah, but you're, you're going through this process, like analyze, like, what am I doing, why? You know, always try to connect with, with something that's gonna make sense to you, okay? So they're able to communicate uh, with each other now. Now, what's missing? Now that we have those two computers to communi uh, communicating. Remember, this PC, we need to move it from VLAN 1, because that PC is still on VLAN 1, we need to move it to VLAN 20, and that's exactly why, what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go to this switch, because that's where the PC is connected to, okay? And if I remember correctly, but let me just double check, okay? I'm gonna unplug it, and plug it back in, and I'm gonna put it on port 20. So I'm gonna configure port 20, okay? So I'm gonna go to the switch, I'm gonna exit out, so I'm gonna do interface, fast ethernet, and that will be port 20, okay? And then I'm gonna do switch port, access, VLAN 20, because that's basically where I want that port to belong to, and VLAN 20. Enter, I don't have no error message, so it's good. So now I'm gonna do do show VLAN. And enter, and I see, okay? I see uh, VLAN 20 HR department, that it has one port, and that's the one that belongs to this one, okay? So, should be good. Now, probably you are seeing this uh, orange dot, and that's because, and this is for another video, okay? This is just basically going through this process with a spanning tree protocol, okay? Now, that's a way for not to take 30, 45 seconds. If we do, we configure that port to be a, um, what it's called, come on, port fast. Port fast and also to enable a BPDU guard. But once again, that's for another video, okay? That's like for CCNA, like, uh, and also CCMP uh, training. Anyways, so now we accomplished what the CEO wanted us to do. And he comes, right? The CEO is like, okay, are they able to still communicating? Let me know, I mean, show me, show me. And I'm like, okay, okay, let me show you. I'm gonna ping, you know, from computer seven to computer, you know, 15, okay? Or whatever. And, oh, this is another thing what's going on. Okay, I completely forgot about this. And you probably, some of you are like, Jorge, are you missing something? Yes, okay. Remember, each VLAN, their own network, their own broadcast, their own subnet, segment. So what's going on right here before? This was the entire network, the 192.168.1.0. But now these two belong on VLAN 10. That means, what that means is, 
that only these two computers belong to that network. And this is the reason why I put this network. So I'm gonna put it right here because this one is gonna be the IP, the network ID for this network for VLAN 20. So now we need to go back on this PC and we need to change the IP address. So let's do that. Because remember, each VLAN, it has to be their own network, okay? So I'm gonna go on this computer and I'm gonna change the IP because they, it belongs in another network. Okay, so I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to IP configuration and the subnet mask, yep, yeah, that's exactly the same, but now the IP. Now in this case, I will use the 150, okay? Because the computer has the 150, so it can make sense, so we can remember. So I'm gonna do the 150 and that's it. Now, you're probably thinking, why 150, Jorge? Because based on the network ID and based on the subnet mask, it's telling me that the network ID, it's 128. The broadcast ID of the network is the last one, 255. So I can use any number from 129 all the way to 254, okay? So right now, I'm gonna try to ping from this computer to that computer, right? So PC7, so that we can end this video, command, and I'm gonna do ping, and I'm gonna do 192, 168, 1, 150, Nothing, nothing, nothing is going on. And I'm showing this to uh, the, the, the CEO, like, you see, it's not working. And then the CEO, uh, Jorge, uh, you know, I asked you to do this, and that's fine, you were able to accomplish that. But, you know, we took all of those uh, files and everything from that computer, you know, from the HR department that's now in somewhere secure. So, yeah, now, uh, yeah, I need those two computers to communicate with each other. So, but just make sure they each of them belong to their own VLAN because we're gonna add more computers in the next few months so we want to make sure okay we want to make sure that you know we have some type of design on our network so keep the VLANs that you created but make sure those computers from you know the IT engineers to the HR department now they're able to communicate so now that's what's going on and so far, as you can see, they're not able to communicate because they belong to another VLAN. And once again, for you to communicate from one network to another network, yes, yeah, some routing needs to happen. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you on the next video. And just by the way, okay, based on this diagram, we do not have any layer three switches. Okay, so what's the solution? Because we don't have the budget, right, in the company. We're gonna, we're gonna have to use this router and use something that it's called router on the stick. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you and walk you through on video number six.